Monica Lewinsky, that woman, is reportedly shopping around a book. I have nothing else funny to add to that. This stuff writes itself. But I am Evo Terra, and this is the Books and Beer Hangout. Welcome, everyone, to another episode of the Books and Beer Podcast. My name is Jeff Moriarty, and our topic today is balancing part-time writing with a full-time life. We have two guests who do exactly that, and I would let them introduce themselves, tell, tell us a little bit about themselves, and tell us what beer they are drinking. Sarah, start us off. Hi. <laughs> uh, my name is Sarah Rios. Um, I write mostly fantasy stuff. Um, I'm a full-time working mom, so <laughs> the writing is, it comes when it comes. <laughs> okay, what fantasy stuff? What's the title? Um, the title of the one I'm shopping around right now is Dominance, actually. It's a werewolf novel. Okay. And do you have a beer over there? I do. I got me a fat tire. All right. Well, welcome. Thanks for joining us. And now, Rachel. Hi, I'm uh, Rachel Deslitz. I'm a young adult writer, and I work full-time. Um, and I have a husband and a lot of cats. And uh, right now, I am drinking a stone-smoked porter with vanilla bean. Excellent choice. <laughs> And I'll just note for the record that of the the book, the writing, the the uh, job, the cats, and everything else, it was your husband that you rolled your eyes at. <laughs> just, no, you know, observation, like, sure it was an accident. It was thinking about the cats while I was saying the husband. <laughs> ah, I see, I see. And what's the name of your book, work, series? In the last year, I've actually finished three, but the one that I'm shopping right now is Rue. It's a young adult contemporary novel. Very Mr. cool. Evo. I, Jeff, am drinking from this big sucker right here. I finished this. This is the, uh, well, actually, there's a funny story about my the beer that I'm choice, and I'm going to tell it to you today. So I went to Whole Foods, as you can see, to fill up my growler of beer, and I thought I would get a DBA by Firestone Locker. Very good American pale. And so I got the growler, brought it home, cracked it open, and realized that wasn't the DBA. That's the double DBA. As opposed to being an American pale ale at 5% alcohol, it's a 12% barley wine. So I got that going for me. <clears throat> it's a very tasty 12%. That is a very <laughs> fine alcoholic beverage you have right there. And it's also empty. <clears throat> yeah. So... We are going to see the uh, intelligence of this podcast drop considerably drop. second per second between you and the way Rachel's pounding them over there. No kidding. Yes. All right, so so what are you drinking? Then we'll get into the book talk. Well, I'm not quite sure how exactly we managed to do this, like squirrels for winter, but we apparently um, secured hop slams all about nooks and crannies of our house. I'm like, <laughs> oh, let's see, what am I going to have for dinner? More hop slams. <laughs> So, ladies, this is a very, very difficult to find once a year released beer that is out and gone, and I'm finding them like Easter eggs all over you, our house. He's a squirrel. You're a squirrel, but with uh, with those, oh, how fantastic! All right, well, while Jeff takes his very first drink, thanks again, ladies, for joining us uh, here today. I know you you told us a little bit about the books you're writing and, and the work you're doing, um, but but Rachel, I want to go back to yours. You said you've you've written three books. Yeah, that's correct. And how, in, in, in what time period did those three books? In the last year. In the last year, you have <laughs> written three books. Not three short stories, not three uh, novelettes, but three books. Well, I've written three books, one novella, and one longer short story, if we want to. Okay, go. all right, all right, okay, <laughs> hold up, hold up. Part-time writing with a full-time life. You said you have a full-time job. I'm yep. now curious what that is. I'm actually a communications editor, but it has nothing to do with fiction writing, so. <laughs> but I got fired from my last job, probably because I wrote on the job. <laughs> job. I was kind of wondering uh -huh. if that there. So here's one tip for everybody. Just don't. Make it work. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. 
Okay. All right. So, so we, we're getting a, a feel for the volume at which at which you go uh, over there, Rachel. So, uh, Sarah, how about you? Um, I've been revising all year. I haven't written a lot of new material. So. You've been revising for a year? Well, no, off oh. and on. Okay. In different projects, not the same book. Okay. And and is this the first book you've written, or are you also a three, four time book writer? Um, I have two completed um, books, but um, only one of them, the one I'm shopping, is ready for um, to be out in the world. And there's a lot of other stories that are at like 20K words, 30K words. So you're a piecemeal kind of person and then finish things up later. Yep. Okay. All right. That so how, how big is, your, is the current book uh, word-wise that you're wrapping up? Um, the one I'm shopping, or mm -hmm. like yeah, one, it's the one current? You're shopping. Oh, okay. um, it's ninety k. Okay. I I kind of hate to ask this, but Rachel, like, how big are yours? If you tell me like five hundred k, oops, you're accidentally going to drop from this. So. No. Um, the one that I'm shopping right now is sixty five k. The other one that's still very rough. It was my nano novel. It's at sixty k, and the other one's at seventy. Okay. All right. So. Digestible, digestible content. We like that. <laughs> we like that. So, as full-time people, you got full-time families, you got full-time jobs. You're, you're you're writing when you can. Um, I, I'm curious when you actually find time to write, uh, other than saying at work and getting fired. We don't we don't want that. When when you're when you're supposed to be, uh, when you when you have the ability, when do you find the time? Anybody after can go the first. toddler goes to bed. <laughs> Okay, so a small child in the house, obviously that puts an impact um, on, on you there. Does that mean you stay up like into the wee hours of the morning writing or get up right and early, slam it out during nap well, times? all summer I've been kind of going to bed at midnight, which is really, it's not a good idea. <laughs> I have to be at my full-time job at 8 o'clock in the morning. So yeah. um, I'm trying to compromise with myself and set an earlier cutoff time, but it's hard because, you know, sometimes you try to get the kid to go to bed at 8.30, and sometimes he's not really down until 9. <laughs> mm. right, so that's, right. that's not a lot of free time to be able to write or edit. How many, how many hours do you like to get writing in in a, in a setting? Uh, at least one hour of uninterrupted. Okay, right. Cool. Do you, yeah. you get that almost every day? You try seven days a week to get that hour in? Not not seven days a week because then I'll burn out. But most of the days of the week, yes. All right. So, Rachel, I want to know how, how you do it again. Not at work, but when do you find time when you are really free? I actually I do it kind of in huge spurts. Um, the first novel that I wrote, I actually wrote in a week, and I was really angry with my boss that week, so that's not a good thing to write at work, but <laughs> I still uh, wrote it in a week. I knew I wasn't going to stay at that job, so but that's besides the point. Um, and then everything else I've done a little bit more gradually than that, but I did finish a nano novel in about a month and a half. I finished the 50K in the month, but the rest of it was about half a month later. And then my other novel I took about two months to do and then I did my novella in a month too so I do spurts and then I take like two months off to play video games <laughs> I really hope the people tuning in to find a great roadmap for their own writing career are uh, really delighting in the juxtaposition between the two paths that you offer um, anyway so when you are uh, in your, your spurt, do you prefer to write in the morning? I mean, do, how do you work that into your schedule and, and everything else? Um, I'm lo very lucky to have my husband's a musician, so he's really creative too. So he understands that I become this sort of rabid writer when I'm writing. <laughs> and if I'm interrupted, then I get, I do get very frustrated with it and I try not to take it out on him. Um, so I, when I do, I come home and I just kind of go until dinner time, and then sometimes I come back and just continue going even after that. So. I'm just trying to picture a household where one half of the household is a 
and a, a frustrated writer, and the other half of the household is a frustrated musician. That has to suck. You must have no friends that come over because that would just be terrible. Here, Either that, or they live in an '80s sitcom. That's yeah. the other the other alternative here, and just the wacky hijinks between the musician <laughs> friends and you know, the big book deals coming in. We actually live with. Um my brother-in-law and his girlfriend, who's my best friend, and they met at our wedding. So it is kind of more sitcom-y than, <laughs> than anything else. So you, I should, am, you should write a book about this. Yeah. <laughs> I wasn't sure until this point, but at this point, I am, I am now certain that you are just with us. Okay, you yeah. are just messing with us, <laughs> this is, this and is we're going to go over to, uh, to Sarah for a little bit. Yeah. Okay. So, so, Sarah, did you take... Did you pick up the writing? Um, you know, as something you wanted to do. Is it before you started the family? Before the the toddler entered the the, the scene, or is it something that you do to maintain your sanity? How did that come into the mix of the many other things that you have to do, being a full time mom of a young one? Um. Well, I've been writing since I was in grade school, so it's it's kind of like my stress relief, a little bit. Um. I did have to give up the writing for about a year because I couldn't reconcile my schedule with work and a new kid and trying to get enough sleep and all that. So that was that was a rough year. But um, I'm back into the pattern now. So it's just there really is no free time. You just kind of make it. <laughs> so what what is your goal in terms of having writing be a part of your life? Are you... Uh, you know, do you want to make it big and, you know, hire a, a nanny to take care of the kid and you're full-time writing away, or is it something you just want to be part of everything else that you do and you're fine with it being a small portion? Um, I always want to write. Um, it would be really nice to get a big, fat, six-figure paycheck, but um, <laughs> you know, right now that's not really my goal. Um, I would like to be published. Um, sooner the better because then you know that's extra income but um, even if I never get published I can always self-publish or even if I don't do that which I don't know why I wouldn't do that but even if I didn't I would still be writing for myself so well, let me let me build on that to clarify a bit so the, the work that you have already out there is it um, is it Self-published on Amazon.com. Is there a publishing deal for that? Is it in print? What's the what format is it out in the world? Um, it's not published actually. Um, I was shopping it around to agents to see if I could get like the traditional publishing deal, and I'm going to do that for a little bit. And if it doesn't work out, then I'm going to go ahead and self-publish. Okay. All right. And Rachel, let me let me guess. You have a six-figure publishing deal. Oh, and totally. you, yeah, okay. <laughs> no, um, it's actually funny because I've I've thought about this. Even if I did get a six-figure publishing deal, and as crazy as this sounds, I think I would still work, um, but not at a full-time job. I think I would go back to being a part-time barista because I actually get a lot of ideas from people watching <laughs> while I do that, and um, it's a good way to keep health insurance while you're still writing, so. <laughs> I agree on the coffee shop. One of my favorite uh, places to people watch is there's a Starbucks in San Francisco, and I'll just sit there in a chair for a half hour and take notes because you could not make up the shit that just walks <laughs> into that coffee shop in San Francisco. Uh-huh. Crazy stuff. So let me ask the, the question about, we're talking about writing, obviously you do because you're passionate about things and, and you would both like to do more with that, but typically today being a writer means more than just slamming out words on a paper, it also means taking care of the other aspects of the business, the editing pieces, uh, the design elements and even promoting and obviously you're, you're both fine at pr promoting yourselves, that's not a problem, but I'm, I am curious about the editing and I am curious about the design work. Do you do all of that yourself or do you work with, uh, with others? Um, I actually design some of my own covers, but I haven't actually published anything yet, so I'll probably end up on the covers that are too fancy for me to design. I'll probably end up hiring someone on that level. Um, 
I actually have a lot of people that are willing to beta read for me and help me edit. Sarah actually is one of my beta readers, so <laughs> we we actually are critique partners for each other on that level, so and she helps me out a lot. And how about for you, Sarah? When you're not, you know, editing her work, um, how about you? All the work that you're doing yourself, or you have somebody else helping you with that? You're shopping this thing around, so I'm assuming it's been professionally edited? Not professionally edited, but um, I... I kind of crowdsource. Um, like Rachel said, she's one of my beta readers. And then I also have a, a few beta readers that um, used to edit or currently are editors. So it helps a lot. Um, but I just generally rely on uh, the help from other writers because they're really good at catching things that I don't catch. Yeah, it's important definitely to have other people read your work. So it sounds like both of you are, are taking this idea of using the community, using others who are in the same area, uh, same boat as you are to kind of, uh, I guess it's a whole rising tide lifts all boats, right? Scratch my back, I scratch yours, and I'll, I should stop with the metaphors right now. But that's the idea. As opposed to paying somebody, that's what, that's what you have chosen to do, yes? Yes. Okay, so here's my question, and, and I know um, that, that Sarah, you mentioned that you were, you're shopping this around and your plan is to, if, if that doesn't go where you want to, self-publish. But I think I just heard uh, Rachel say that you, all, all those books you've written are, are also not yet published. Is that, is that a true statement, Rachel? Um, yeah, mine aren't actually, one of them is currently in the hands of an agent and she has the full manuscript and I'm anxiously... Okay awaiting and refreshing my email way too many times a day uh, <laughs> hoping to okay. hear some good news. So you're in the, you're in the, you're in the same boat. So yep. but but at some time neither of you are opposed to going the self publishing route. You just chose to try for the traditional get an agent, get a big book deal thing first. Yes? Okay. My question, why? In case you get that nice big fat check, the six figures. <laughs> okay. Same thing for you on that one, Rachel? Um, writing for me is a lot about working with other people, and as strange as it sounds, some of my favorite experiences are actually working with critique partners, so I think on top of the six-figure paycheck, it would actually be really nice to get feedback from an agent and from someone that knows the industry a little bit better than I do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. That seems legitimate to me. Jeff, go. So I was getting into listening and didn't have another question prepared, so... Um, <laughs> When, uh, how long are you giving before um, uh, Evo and I can help you just publish your books on your own? <laughs> I actually, for each of my pieces, I have a set number of times that I've decided to get rejections. Um, and then once I meet that rejection cap, that's when I'm going to pay an editor and go either small publishing or uh, self publishing. Okay. And Sarah, how long are you going to give the uh, shopping it around before you uh, embark on your own? Um, probably six months or a certain number of rejections, whichever happens first. And until then, you can, yeah, you I'll probably like seek a, out an editor. And you can tell you can make a quilt out of rejection notices, and then exactly. <laughs> Yeah, I'm, I'm I'm in a writing group, and every time someone gets a, a rejection letter, we all applaud. It's you know, it's we're trying to see who can get the biggest stack of them. It's uh, you gotta you gotta roll with it. So, what what else are you doing um, outside of the the writing to to further your career? Then, so if you don't have books out there, there's not a lot of that promotion and so on. So, what um, what are you doing to kind of get to for the, either the networking or to build other skills for? you know, making connections for editing, cover design, other things. What other work do you do? Sarah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, actually, um, by having all the uh, critique partners of fellow writers, that's kind of a promotion in itself because then they see what your writing is like. And so once you actually do have something ready to go, then you have your own little fan base preset. Um, and then also I tease people with little scenes from stuff I've already written and Rachel hates me for that. <laughs> um, no, drama. She... Rachel, why do you hate <laughs> Sarah? No, she's, she's absolutely right. Um, I'm actually a huge fan of Sarah's writing. <laughs> I think 
that her story is great and she'll tease me with parts of book two and I'm so angry because I haven't read it yet. Um, so I'm definitely going to buy it when it finally does come out, whichever format it does come out in. But I, I'm also doing kind of a similar thing and then I also have a blog and I know that Sarah has a blog too. So I think that's a little bit of self-promotion because that's where I put a lot of excerpts or I don't try to publish my flash fiction. I just kind of put it on my blog because it just gives people a little bit of a style of how I write so they know what to expect from me when I am finally published. So let me ask this question. You're both young ladies in your beginning your careers uh, as authors with, with dreams and aspirations of, of, of doing something more than you are right now and, and, and you seems like you both have a plan and an understanding of things but are you happy at the position you're at right now? Do you think you're behind? Do you think you're going too fast? Or are you the classic, you know, just right? Sometimes I wish I could write a little bit faster. That's about it, though. So other than that, happy with where you're at right now in your, in your life stage? Yep. Okay. All right. Rachel? Um, pretty happy. I mean... I, as of last year, I had a lot of partial books written, and it was finally October last year where I said, this has to stop. I actually have to finish something. Right. So I say that in the last year, I'm in a much better place now than I was a year ago. Okay, so let's project this. Five years from now. Rachel, where are you five years from now? Show me the Rachel when at five years from now. Ideally living in a house with no roommates. Um, yeah, that would be number one on my goal, too. But let's talk about you as an author. <laughs> yeah, no, I know. Um, I, I would like to at least have something self-published, if not traditionally published. Um, I really do want to wait out on at least one of my manuscripts and try to see, really see if I can get it traditionally published. But I definitely expect one or two of my manuscripts to be self-published in five years. Goodness, I hope so. <laughs> All right. That sounds like a realistic goal to me. Sarah? Uh, two books will be published, and whether or not that's traditional is, you know, up to the people looking at my manuscripts. But I will publish two things within the next five years. Right now, looking at people in the either self-publishing or, you know, whether it's traditional or whatever, the author space, who do you look up to as someone that you really admire? And you can't say each other because I get cavities from all the sugary sweetness here. So can't say each other. Who do you look to to say, wow, there is somebody balancing or really doing the writing author thing great? Do you know other people out there write? <laughs> not the only two that do this. There's many. <laughs> no, I'm I'm friends. Sorry. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> I'm friends um, with a lot of different writers, but I think most of them are either full-time writers. I'm trying to think of someone right now that's part-time. Maybe Sarah has one. Sarah, do you have one? Um, Bliss Morgan, actually does the oh, balancing right. thing really well. Yes, yeah, she does. Yes, yeah, she does. Okay. So we are in the home stretch, so I've got one final question for you. If you were in a train from New York heading west at 150 miles, at, no? Wrong, all right, sorry, wrong question. Okay. Name one mistake that you've made as someone trying to balance the full-time career with part-time authorship that you would advise someone getting into this space to avoid. Rachel. Um, to not, yeah, uh, when, <laughs> when I was starting out on writing, I guess my biggest mistake was being so worried about failure because I think that stopped me from <clears throat> finishing a lot of projects that I started. And instead of actually just sitting there and, and finishing it, I would totally just stop myself from finishing and saying like, well, I'm never going to get published anyway, so what's the point? And I wish I could go back and kick that mentality out because, I mean, even if I don't get pu published traditionally, the publishing industry has changed a lot. And right now I do have someone looking at my full, so 
even if she doesn't pick it up, that's still a huge step in the right direction. So I wish I could just kick myself, <laughs> my, my old self. Got All right, Sarah? Um, don't hesitate. Um, keep writing, even if you don't want to write, and also don't write at work. <laughs> <laughs> so you learned that vicariously. Uh, no, I, I learned that on my own also. I, I used to do that. <laughs> Not not good ideas. All right, ladies. Well, thank you very much. I think those are both very good, very good pieces of suggestions there. And uh, and on that, we shall wrap the books and beer hangout. Uh, thanks very much to both of you uh, for joining us here on the program today. And also thanks to all of you out there for watching the show. However, it is you may have found us. We record the books and beer hangout every Thursday night at 6 p.m. It's simulcast live on YouTube Live. If you want to check out more information about uh, the show as well as our guests and links back to their information, you can find that at booksandbeer.com. For more information, education, and insight into the world of being a digital writer today, please check out epublishunum.com. For Jeff Moriarty, I'm Evo Terra. Thanks for watching.